All right, guys, before we get started, if you're new to this channel, my name is Tom. I am an instrument rated pilot now. I'm on my way up through all the ratings, trying to make a career change midlife. I'm doing my best to take you guys along with me on YouTube, show you guys my successes, my mistakes, everything that I'm going through, learning this as a midlife pilot trying to make a career change in 2023. So as we're going through this, don't forget if you guys like the content, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel. You can even share this if you want. Um, you can also follow me on Instagram, link right there, but let's get into it. So I have officially passed my instrument check ride. I am an instrument rated pilot now. And while it was still fresh in my mind, I wanted to go through the entire check ride, tell you guys the questions that I was asked, everything that we went over, um, give you some tips and tricks on how I prepared. I got four flight brought up. We'll show you guys how I used four flight to get through the check ride. We'll go over my entire cross country that I had planned for it. But first thing, this was actually my second attempt at my instrument rating. So the first check ride I did not pass. I was unsatted during my oral exam. Um, I'm gonna make a whole video on that. I had an absolutely terrible experience in the check ride. We're not gonna go over that in here. This was my second attempt. Spoiler alert, the check ride went very, very well. I uh, passed my oral exam, no issues, and my flight exam, no issues, with just minor feedback, and we'll go over all that when we get in the video. Okay, so first things first, you guys know, you have the instrument rating ACS. I use this extensively to study for my test. This goes over everything that they're gonna ask you. Um, I'm not gonna go over all this. There's a lot of videos on how to use the ACS to study. I went in and actually used the ACS, took notes, um, highlighted things that I was deficient in, in my opinion, um, like this. So, I mean, use the ACS. This is what they're gonna ask you in the check ride. So if you can get through the ACS and you can confidently um, perform the skills, especially in the ACS, you'll be good to go. Second thing I used is the ASA uh, Instrument Pilot Oral Exam Guide. Again, went through this, highlighted things, um, this is extensive. So if you are asked all these questions in your check ride, I feel terrible for you. They're not going to ask you all these questions, but this covers everything. Um, in fact, I feel like I was probably over prepared in this case uh, for my check ride because uh, I was not asked even probably a quarter of the questions that were in here. Um, but nonetheless, I used it to study and I felt very prepared using that. Um, other thing I used to study um, was my Pilots Cafe. So you can purchase this off pilotscafe.com. It's actually free, um, but you can purchase it if you want to donate to the guy who put it together. He does a great job of summarizing everything. Like you got VORs in here, um, all the regulations, all that stuff. It's all in here. That's what you got to use to study. So tip number one, study, obviously, okay? The ground school that I used for my instrument was Sporties, and the test prep software that I used was Shepard Air. And um, the Shepard Air was awesome. If you guys don't know about that and you're looking at an instrument or a commercial exam, definitely look into Shepard Air. Um, I was able to get a 98% on my written exam using Shepard Air, so cannot recommend them enough. All right, on to the check ride itself. So check ride starts out with an oral exam, obviously. Um, and uh, it was scenario based. So my DPE was fantastic, very easy to talk to, very calming. You know, you're obviously nervous for a check ride. He was awesome. Okay, so let's jump over to four flight real quick. I'll show you guys my, um, my cross country that I have planned. All right, so you guys can see here, here is my cross country. It was planned from Low Country Regional Airport up to, you think I would know the name, Blacksburg, it's Virginia Tech Airport, whatever the airport up in Virginia Tech is. But tip number one here, know everything on the low and route chart. So especially along the route that you were requested to do a cross country flight on. And that seems kind of obvious, but for sure they're going to ask you this. So go along your route, and um, this is exactly what we did in the check ride. He had me pull up my cross country, explain to me why I chose the route that I chose. I chose my flight along airways because this is an instrument check ride. You could go direct in a lot of cases, but really you want to show them that you've considered the route and you want to give them reasoning on why you did that. Okay, so along the route, they're going to ask you all these questions. So I was asked, what is this? What does this X with a flag mean? Why are there T's at the end of these airways? What are the minimum and route altitudes? What are the minimum obstruction clearance altitudes? You need to be able to, able to identify those. So you've got an MEA of 2000 here. You wanna know route lengths. You wanna know why airports are colored green, why airports are colored brown, why airports are colored blue. But for sure, go along your route, understand all the air spaces you're gonna be flying through. Even though it is IFR, you can still get asked that. And just make sure you understand all the symbols along the way. One of the really important things that I actually found out about my DPE was that they were very comfortable with four flight. So some DPEs you might hear are still sticklers about paper charts, things like that. So you, you do want to understand if that's going to be the case. Um, I was, I reached out and I found out that my DPE actually was completely comfortable using four flight, which in my opinion, they should be. Four flight is a fantastic resource. Um, most, most pilots use four flight or Garmin pilot to do all their pre-flight and get their weather briefings, things like that. But if you're going to use ForeFlight, make sure you are proficient in using it. Make sure you understand 
what is available to you on Portfolio. Make sure you understand how to use the imagery, how to build binders. Make sure you guys understand, for example, when you plan a flight in Four Flight and you send it to your flights and you click on the briefing tab and you go to the weather report, that that's actually recorded in Four Flight for 20 days. So that is a legal weather report, which you guys know you legally need to get weather reports if you're gonna be flying away from your home airport. So Four Flight does that for you, but make sure you understand that because they're gonna ask you. They're gonna say, how do you get a weather report? And a lot of guys are gonna say, oh, you can call 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Who's doing that anymore? Nobody. So are you gonna do that in real life? If you are, that's great. But if you're not, make sure you understand that in four flight, why that is a legal substitute for calling the 1-800-WX-BRIEF. Stuff like that. Make sure you're proficient in using it. So DPEs tend to be local. So there's a good chance that you might be able to find another pilot who's had a check ride with that DPE. Um, I was lucky enough, I have a lot of friends in the area that fly. A couple of them knew my DPE already and had recently taken uh, check rides with them. So good resource. I reached out to them, asked, hey, how was your check ride? What are some things that they were sticklers on? All DPEs are different. They have to follow the ACS, but within the ACS, there's, there's, there's wiggle room there. So they can ask you as much as they want about each topic. Um, and you know you need to be prepared to answer those questions. And it's a good idea to know where your particular DPE is going to be a stickler on so you can focus on that a little bit closer. And while I'm thinking about it, don't give them any information that they didn't ask you to give them. Answer the question that was asked of you. I cannot recommend this enough. Um, I was pretty good about this and it was kind of obvious in the check ride. My DP would ask me a question. I answered that exact question. I made him pull the information out of me. I did not volunteer anything that he did not ask. This is something you hear about a lot in check rides. Don't be going into check rides saying, oh, I would do this and that and then keep elaborating because eventually you're going to get to a point where you don't know what you're talking about and that's, that's going to look bad. So just answer the question. If they ask more, answer that question, move on. Um, furthermore, along that flight, they're going to ask you all of the stuff you already know you're going to ask. Do you need an alternate? Why did you choose the alternate that you chose? What are the weather minimums? All those regulation stuff that you guys are studying, you need to know that they're going to ask it of you. They have to ask it of you. All right, the next thing that they're definitely going to ask you on is personal minimums. This is a big one. Um, I set my own personal minimums and I set them high. I set them at 2,000 foot ceilings and greater than five miles of visibility. I got that because that's marginal VFR about, um, and that's all that I'm truly comfortable doing right now. So that was my answer. I was able to explain why I got those alternate minimums. I've heard some people use um, alternate minimums based on circling minimums for each approach. That's another good one. But just choose your alternate minimums, make sure that they're conservative, and be able to explain why you chose those. That's a big one. The next thing they're gonna make you bring up are the approach plates. So know the approach plates, um, especially at your destination airport, um, maybe even at your departure airport, airports along the way, um, and then certainly your alternate airport as well. So familiarize yourself with those approach plates. If you are lucky enough to know where your check ride is going to be and what airport you're gonna fly to, which you likely will, um, definitely study those too, because for the flight portion, it, it's gonna make it really easy. You're not gonna have to be briefing them in real time. You'll be familiar with them already. All right, and I'll give you guys an example here. So here's PCB, scroll in here. This was my destination for my cross country. Um, Oh, sorry, here it is. Procedure, approach. Um, the approach that I chose this day based on the weather that I was given was RNAMP 23. So a simple, simple approach plate. Um, but you know, be able to go through this. I was able to explain, you know, my my standard briefing, make sure you know that your charts are valid, make sure you understand the valid times, things like that. Um, and then be able to walk them through the approach and missed approach procedure, difference between LPV and LNAV, VNAV, that's a big one, you wanna know that difference. I actually wasn't asked that in this check ride, um, but I've heard of people being asked this in previous check rides. So make sure you understand the difference between those two, both non-precision approaches, but make sure you understand the difference. LNAV, circling minimums, everything on here. Make sure you know it, make sure you can pull it up and walk them through it. The other thing I was asked was how to pick up a clearance. So they're gonna give you real world scenarios, say, hey, we're leaving, we're going to this airport, how do I get a clearance? So at this particular airport, I knew there was no frequency that I could I could reach approach on. Before the check ride, I had put the phone number of the, of the closest clearance delivery in my phone. So I showed them, hey, look, I have it saved in my phone. I fly out of this, out of this area frequently. This is why I have it in my phone. If I ever need to get a clearance, this is how I would do it. So look up the number, make sure you put that in your phone, show them you've done the research. And that's it guys, for the oral exam, if you guys use the ACS and you guys use your instrument pilot oral exam guide um, and you know this well, you guys are gonna be just fine for the oral exam. So now onto the flight portion. All right, so here we go. This is the actual flight that I did uh, for my check ride. So I was lucky enough that my DPE kept it local. He kept it at this airport. So you guys know in the flight portion, they're gonna give you three different approaches. They're gonna give you some unusual attitudes. Um, again, this is all laid out in the ACS. You don't have to guess on this. So we took off. Um, I was given vectors to final for the ILS-23, 
Um, in this case, we did ILS 2-3 Zulu, and then we went missed on that, on that approach, and then did a hold. That was my holding procedure, so we did one lap in the hold. Came out of the hold, went right into unusual attitudes, wasted no time. Then I was given another approach. My DP was also fantastic in that I didn't have an autopilot to fly this. If you do have an autopilot, make sure you know how to use that. An autopilot helps because you can set a heading and an altitude and have it hold that while you're briefing the approach. My DPE was awesome. He volunteered to take the airplane while I was briefing the approach, which is truly a real life scenario, right? If you are uh, in a scenario where ATC gives you an approach that you can't take, you're gonna ask them for time or vectors um, so you can brief the approach before you go do it. That's good aeronautical decision making. You're not gonna be doing approaches without having a proper briefing. So in a check ride, they're gonna be giving you approach after approach after approach. Um, and my DP was nice enough to take the airplane, allow me to pull up the approach plates, set the approach in the GPS, brief the approach, and then say, okay, I'm ready to go. I briefed it, and then he gives you the airplane back, and then it's your job to fly the airplane and fly the approach. So that was my scenario. I was very grateful for that. Okay, so went on. Did an hour nav approach. This was my circling approach. This is the part that I messed up on. So you can see I came in here, um, I went visual and it was circle the land runway five. Well, this airport has crossing runways and I looked at what I thought was runway five and I lined up on the wrong runway for downwind. Now, he didn't mention this, but I noticed it right here. Okay, I noticed it in the middle of it. I said, oh, I'm lined up with the wrong one way and I, I corrected. Okay, so that I think saved me. Again, he didn't didn't mention that, but um, that was the mistake that I made in my check ride. So lined up with the wrong 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 runway. That's hard to say, and then um, corrected it myself. And in setting up for this approach, we had to extend our downwind pretty far um, because of you know VFR traffic in the area. So not a huge deal, but talk through it when you're in your flight portion. Make sure you're explaining what you're doing and why you're doing it. Don't let them sit there and wonder what you're doing. So I even said, I said, look, I know that we're supposed to be at this altitude, but we're extending downwind to make room for this traffic. In real life, that would not be happening because you're BIFR. Um, so I'm going to climb. I don't I don't want to be at this altitude. We're too low. Are you okay with me climbing? He says, of course, yep, you can climb. We're out, we're out far. That's, that's a good decision. So that was it, guys. That was my instrument check ride. I was actually very, very happy with this check ride. I was happy with my performance during the oral exam. Again, didn't have to look up a single thing. I had my my, F, my far aim there with me, didn't have to use it. Um, and I was confident in my abilities going in, but it was really nice to be vindicated and you know see that the work that I had done up to this point um, was good work and it allowed me to, to pass. So, so to summarize for you guys, the resources that I used, my ACS, my oral exam book, my pilot cafe, um, read all that. I also use a lot of YouTube videos. There's tons of tons of good uh, resources on YouTube where they're going over mock check rides. Um, I'll put links to some of this stuff in the description so you guys can use it, see what I used. And don't forget if your guys' DPE is local, try to reach out to some local pilots that have gone with that DPE before. Because um, again, each DPE is different. And that's it guys. I don't think there's anything more I can give you. A lot of what I said was obvious, but I used videos like this to help me get ready and I wanted to get one out for you guys while it was still fresh in my mind, tell you guys what my experience was like. And yeah, I could not be happier. I'm an instrument rated pilot. This was a big, big accomplishment for me. I'm very, very proud to say that I am instrument rated. Um, and for me, it's on to commercial now. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. You can follow me on Instagram if you want to. All that jazz. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Real quick, I'm gonna bring into floor flight and show you a couple of things that helped me in my check ride. We're not gonna go through the whole thing. This is not a floor flight tutorial. I just wanna show you guys some of the binders that I made to help me out with this. So I go to my documents page. Here are all the binders that I had ready to go. So all of my um, airplane binders, my POHs, things like that, obviously you have to have the paper copies in the plane, but this just shows that you're double prepared, right? Uh, also, make sure you have a backup for floor flight. So you need to have a cell phone. Maybe you do have paper records. Make sure you have a backup ready to go because they're going to ask you what happens when your iPad overheats and you are in IMC and you have to make an approach. If all you have is an iPad and you're not prepared, um, that's going to be a problem. So in my case, for example, I had my iPad. I had a spare phone. I have a spare iPad that I bring with me on long trips and the GTN 750 in my airplane has approach charts built into it. So I have you know, several, several backups available to me and just show your DP that you did the research and that you're prepared for an iPad failure if this is going to be your main source. All right, coming back through, I've got all my certificates in case they asked. I've got the FARs here ready to, to uh, use. 
Um, general reference, this is stuff that I have regardless, right? Um, sometimes I'm, I'm curious what I see on a VFR chart, things like that. I've got that in there. And this is the main one, IFR check ride qualification. So I took pictures of the airworthiness, the registration, all that stuff so I can show them if they asked. Um, also, obviously, that's in the airplane. Um, and then IFR reference. So this was specifically for my check ride. So I have my Pilot's Cafe in here, my uh, IFR quick reference guide, low and root legend, just in case I did slip up and he asked me what a symbol was, I didn't know, I had that ready to go right there. I've got my chart supplement in there. That is one thing I did have to use um, in the check ride. I had to pull up my, he asked me, you know, what's what's a standard departure? And, you know, 200 feet per nautical mile. I was like, well, that's 200 feet per nautical mile. How many feet per minute is that? There's a chart in the chart supplement. There's a chart in the chart supplement that you can use um, to, to make that calculation quickly. I pulled it up, showed him I knew how to use it. That was good. Um, other legends, I got the ACS in here as well. My aeronautical information manual is a big one. Uh, instrument flying handbook. I didn't intend to actually use that in the check ride, but if it's in here, another thing is, and this kind of got me on my first check ride, is I wasn't ready to use these electronically. Um, that was one of the things I admit that I was deficient on in my first one, right? So for example, if I want to come in here and bring up the, uh, the, the AIM, it's hard to search actually. You think you could search a keyword? If you search, I don't know, a random keyword, it's gonna bring up every single page. So make sure you've gone through this and bookmarked what you need to know. Another thing to know is that a lot of these are HTML and you can come in here and instead of doing search, like for the word pirate, for example, as you guys can see, a billion things come up about pirates. So go to your bookmarks and either bookmark it or you can come here to the contents and since it's HTML, it's all broken out for you. So you can actually search um, these HTMLs rather than scrolling through pages or using the search function. This was extremely helpful um, and it's helpful in real life too. So just understand that you can do that as well. Okay, that's all I want to show you guys in 4Flight. Make sure you're proficient, make sure you know how to use it, make sure you got backups, um, so on and so forth.